Imagine the busiest highway you've ever seen, with millions of vehicles moving in both directions every second. That's what's happening right now at every cell membrane in your body, a constant flow of molecules moving in and out. Welcome to Seismic, I'm Matt, and today we're exploring the amazing world of cell transport, how cells control what gets in and what gets out. Every breath you take, every sip of water, every bite of food depends on cell transport mechanisms that have been perfecting themselves for billions of years. Let's discover this cellular traffic system. The cell membrane is like the world's most sophisticated security system. It's selective about what it allows through. The membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins that act like doors and checkpoints. The selective permeability means some substances can cross easily, others might need a little help, and some are completely blocked. Uncharged molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide can slip through easily. But larger molecules like glucose and charged particles like sodium and potassium ions need special help to cross the membrane. It's like having different entrances for different types of visitors. Understanding transport requires knowing about concentration gradients, the difference in concentration of a substance on either side of the membrane. Substances naturally want to move from high concentration to low concentration, like water flowing downhill. Passive transport doesn't require energy. Substances move naturally down their concentration gradients. Simple diffusion is the most basic type. Molecules just spread out until they're evenly distributed. This is how oxygen enters your cells and carbon dioxide leaves. These small uncharged molecules can slip right through the phospholipid bilayer without any help. But what about larger molecules like glucose? Well, they use facilitated diffusion. They still move down their concentration gradient, but they need help from transport proteins. Think of these proteins as doors that only open for specific molecules. Channel proteins create tunnels through the membrane. It's like having a dedicated lane on our cellular highway. Carrier proteins actually change shape to shuttle molecules across, more like a ferry service. The key thing about passive transport is that it's free no energy required. Cells just take advantage of natural molecular movement and concentration gradients. Sometimes cells need to move substances against their concentration gradient, from low concentration to high concentration. This is active transport, and it requires energy, usually in the form of ATP. The sodium-potassium pump is a perfect example. Your nerve cells pump sodium out and potassium in, maintaining the electrical conditions needed for nerve signals. This happens against both concentration ingredients, so it definitely requires energy. Transport proteins use ATP energy to change shape and pump molecules uphill against their natural tendency to spread out. It's like having molecular escalators powered by cellular electricity. Active transport lets cells concentrate needed nutrients inside while pumping out waste products, even when the concentration gradients would naturally push it in the opposite direction. For really large molecules, cells use bulk transport. Endocytosis brings large particles in by wrapping them in membrane, while exocytosis exports materials by fusing internal vesicles, like a transport bubble, with the cell membrane. Now, osmosis deserves special attention. It's the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane. Water moves toward areas of higher concentrations of dissolved substances. This creates three important scenarios. In hypotonic solutions, where there's less solute outside than inside the cell, water moves in and the cell swells or gets bigger. In hypertonic solutions, with more solute outside, water moves out and the cell shrinks or shrivels. In isotonic solutions, water moves equally in both directions, in and out. So cell size stays constant. This is why IV fluids in hospitals are carefully balanced to match your body's chemistry. Plants depend on osmosis for structural support. When plant cells are full of water, they create turgor pressure that keeps plants rigid. When they lose water, plants tend to wilt. This also explains why drinking salt water is so dangerous. It creates hypertonic conditions that pull water out of your cells, leading to dehydration, even though you're drinking liquid. Now let's see transport in action. When you breathe, oxygen diffuses from your lungs into your bloodstream because there's more oxygen in your lungs than in your blood. No energy needed, just natural diffusion at work. When you eat, 
Glucose enters your cells through facilitated diffusion, helped by transport proteins. Insulin hormone increases the number of glucose transporters, making it easier for cells to absorb sugar from your blood. Your kidneys use active transport to fine tune your blood chemistry, pumping specific ions and molecules back into your bloodstream while letting waste pass through in the form of urine. Your nerve cells constantly use active transport to maintain the electrical gradients needed for thinking, moving, and sensing. Every thought you have depends on the sodium potassium pump. When transport goes wrong, serious problems result. Cystic fibrosis occurs when chloride transport doesn't work properly, leading to thick, sticky mucus in the lungs. Cell transport is actually happening in every cell of your body right now. Oxygen's flowing in, carbon dioxide is flowing out, nutrients are being absorbed, and waste is being removed. It's a perfectly coordinated system that keeps you alive. Understanding transport is crucial for medicine, biotechnology, and research. Many drugs work by affecting transport processes, and disease often involve transport problems. Now, don't forget to subscribe and let us know down in the comments which transport process do you think is the most important for life. Thanks for exploring cellular transport with Seismic. Want to explore more about cellular processes and biology? Check out our complete science curriculum at seismic.com where every student can learn, grow, and achieve.